we reached the entrance safe and sound. The creepy murder on the arch is such a familiar sight now. All right, if we made it this far, then we must be. Yeah, it's all good now. Christy doesn't move. She looks worried, staring off at the forest's entrance. Hmm? What's wrong? Huh? Oh. Um, over there. Doesn't it look like someone's there? She's looking at a picnic table hiding in the gloom next to the gate. My gaze is drawn over as if by magnets. What is that? Oh! Oh! Oh no 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 this is this is a not the bees moment this is very much a not the bees moment no 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 The scene before me is strange. Oh, really? You think so? You think it's strange, huh? Oh, no. I don't know what's possibly strange about this. Oh, my God. There's a huge, misshapen man with bees crawling all over his face. My eyes fixate on his mouth. He looks like he's laughing. My heart thunders painfully when I catch a glimpse of the limp figure sitting beside him. It's him, that man. He was going to commit suicide, Masao Kimura. It's definitely him. Oh my. Control those that are different and exercise. What? That strange voice echoes in my head again. My vision warps. He's dead. Kimura's dead? When? Why is he on that bench? My legs give out, and when I can finally focus enough, I find myself kneeling on the ground. Uh, old man, keep it together. Uh, it's still okay. He hasn't seen us. We have to escape while we can. Uh... Christy's completely out of it. She won't move an inch unless someone drags her. L let's go. We're going to the parking lot quietly. Shu, you bring her. Y you got it. Come on, Mashita, let's go. Mashita? He's gone. Huh? I took my eyes off him for two seconds, and he's not by the bench anymore. He disappeared. Hmm? Ah! A machine growls, and the undergrowth near us rustles. Yeah, he's right there. Run! Mashita yells, scrambling away. A hollow bang rings up from behind me. A gunshot? It must be Mashita. I had no idea he had a gun. I dive headfirst into the car, slamming my head accidentally into the steering wheel. Mashita tumbles into the passenger's seat last. You didn't tell me you had a gun? Why would I tell you? No time to talk now. Just hit the gas. I, I'm trying. The engine won't start. Sh shit. Uh, old man, what are you doing? Nishida looks through the front windshield at the figure approaching. Hurry it up. He's coming. Sh shoot it. Shoot the fucking thing. 
Christy cowers in the back seat, her head in her hands. Please, God. <laughs> Something bumps the hood of the car. The whole vehicle rocks violently. But then... It turned on. Go. Let's get the hell out of here. Tires squealing, we race out of the parking lot. Oh. Okay. 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 Oh my god. Hmm. An unspeakable sense of relief fills the car. Hmm. If feeling truly alive is a sensation, then it most definitely feels like this. The greatest irony is that the only time you can truly, f you can feel truly alive, is when you have a brush with death. No one speaks for a while. We're all soaking in that feeling. It's only after we've left the mountain and reached buildings again that I feel like talking. Still, I glance through the rearview mirror and then at the passenger seat. Both Mashita and Shu are looking out their windows. Was it really okay for you to come here? If Mary finds out... Obviously, I came with her permission. Mashita immediately retorts. If I hadn't, I wouldn't have come. I get it. Mary must have also guessed that we were in danger. So what happened to that explanation? Who's that woman behind us? Oh, right. I tell him everything I know so far about Christy Arimura. Oh, hang on. Okay. She offers up some details as well. The moment her background comes to light, Mishida smiles coldly. Arimura. Right, now that you mention it, I do remember you. You were fired over that scandal. You... why I never... Should I be disgusted or amazed at his rudeness? But these scars you all have... Uh, what were they called? Marks. Thanks. So you all have these marks? What happens when you have one? Well... Mishita butts in from the passenger seat. You die within a few days' time. Suffering from something like amnesia. You zone out and your brain takes a vacation. It all happened to me. Shu scoffs. <laughs> you talk like it's someone else's problem. Shu. Ishida didn't mean it like that. You can only be blunt when discussing this. Doesn't look like Shu will buy that excuse, though. Guess it really is not your problem. After all, you don't have a mark anymore. Huh? What's he talking about? Oh, well, you see... Mashida has already lost Hanahiko's mark. He's free now. So there's no good reason for him to be here with us, but... You're putting yourself in danger for the truth? I can't believe it. You're like a saint. Christie's exaggerated compliment is drowned out by Mashita's sardonic laugh. It's nothing that noble. But thanks to that, I've learned the thing I most wanted to know. And what's that? When and how people get the mark. The first time I was oblivious, but... 
This time, I was aware of it. Hmm? Huh? Mishida, you don't mean... He gives me his usual crooked, cro crooked grin and shows me his wrist. Sure enough, his skin is blemished by a scar that looks like a spirit's bite mark. Shu cries out, a look of horror on his face. C come on, no way! Did you seriously do that? Man, give it up already. It's someone else's problem, right? So just shut it. He purposely got himself recursed. I guess just so he could learn about it. What the hell? Mashita, could I say something? What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. You never told me you had a gun. Oh, that. He laughs scornfully and shoves a paper bag into my hands. I open the bag and find... a revolver-style handgun at the bottom. If you want it, take it. That's not why I... Shida keeps on talking without stopping to hear what I have to say. It's loaded with five bullets. You can hang on to it. But promise me. Promise you what? Don't use it on anything other than a spirit. Not that there's any proof it'll work on them. Of course. Have any experience with guns? There's no way I would. To be fair, I don't really know. But at the very least, right now I'm not getting the feeling that I can handle a gun. Oh. Only use it under extreme stress. With no experience, you won't hit your mark. Well, whatever. If I'm there, just leave the shooting to me. You can face the spirit some other way. Yeah, that's how it was at H Elementary, too. For God's sake, keep it hidden. Gun possession gets you three years penal labor. I'd get hit with one to ten myself just for giving it to you. And shooting a single bullet would get you more than three years if not a life sentence. So you're telling me not to use it? No, I'm just telling you that if it's restricted that badly by the law, it's got that kind of power. Got handgun. Well, all right then. The mark's color grows more vivid. Early dawn. A few hours left until death closes in. Okay then. Well, damn. All right. Hi, Mary. Welcome back, Lord Yashiki. You as well, Lord Shu. It appears that the woman with you is also a mark-bearer. We introduce Christy, and then Mary proceeds to fill her in on everything. The mark after your life, memory loss, and the spirits who curse them into the living. Hang on, I'm just trying to get a little more comfy here. Christy accepts her new reality surprisingly quickly. Guess it's only natural after what she saw in the forest. I then update Mary on what we found. I see. What a close call for you. I can hear relief in her voice, but why did she let Mashita go? If you must know, after you left, Lord Mashita insisted on traveling to the forest as well. Rice flick over to Mashita. I'm not one to just sit around. Mashita shrugs nonchalantly. It was quite the issue. A selfish attitude like that could get all of you mark bearers killed. I normally would have refused. Did something happen? No. I admit I had a foreboding feeling. I sensed danger was closing in on you, Lord Yashiki. So he went, an emergency measure. 
Lord Mashita, please know that I will not allow such a thing a second time. Her cool, vo her cool voice is icier than usual. Mashita's so hard-headed, I wonder if she's actually getting through to him at all. Now, from what you have told me, you are positive that it was Shimi O who gave Lord Shu his mark. <clears throat> yeah. That ugly monster is definitely the huge man I saw that time. The fact that I have the mark now too proves it. Mashita rubs at his wrist, smirking. So, what exactly are you planning? Don't tell me you're seriously thinking of fighting that thing. There's no way you'd win. You're completely mad if you think you can. She's right. A certain someone's awesome bullets didn't even scratch it. We need a tank or something to beat that thing. The room falls silent. I'm sure all of us are thinking about what we saw back at the forest. Oof. 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 There's no way we can do anything about a monster like that. We have to leave it to the police. You honestly believe they'll do something? Go and make a suicide pact with that naive thinking, but leave me out of it. What? How dare you? Yo, boss. All this high and mighty talk coming from you, that mean you've got an idea how to beat it? How the hell would I know that? But I'm willing to risk my life to find one. His shout is hoarse. He's probably uneasy. Christy shivers. Shu just glares at Mashita. An awkward silence falls again. We're wasting time. We've got to do something, but... <sighs> Take charge, turn to Mary, stay quiet. Um... Turn to Mary. There's nothing I can do but rely on a doll. I glance over at Mary. May I interject? Sounds like she read my mind. We have only a limited amount of time until dawn when the spirit vanishes. Do what you can before then. It would be wise to gather information on Shimi O. Eh, you say that, but... No way we can find a needle in a haystack. We gotta have a clue first. Then, why don't we check out the bee farm that's north of H Shrine? My reports say several people have seen Shimio there. Hardly anyone ever goes there now with the weird events in the forest. Why is a bee farm up there? A cult called Honey Bee Family used to live on the land. No one's there anymore, though. Wait, honeybee family? Didn't we find notes for that? How come? They committed mass suicide. Mass suicide in the woods. I've heard about that somewhere. Mashita might have mentioned something similar before we entered the forest. The tabloids and gossip shows ate it up five years ago. They never revealed the details, though, so the public doesn't know. Oh yeah, I remember that. But my club took up all my time back then, so I don't know much. <clears throat> you seem to know quite a bit about the forest, Christy Arimura. Read up on it to find a primo spot. Don't be an ass. I was put in charge of the report, so I did my research. Honeybee family was very insular and secretive. 
I heard the mass suicide end was all the members following their leader. New channels chalked it up to their to their discontent with modern society. What happened to the leader? Rumors say it was also suicide. Though, I saw an old picture of him and he was a huge obese man. Suddenly, everyone is holding their breath. No doubt we're picturing the same thing. The monster at the forest entrance. The dead guys come back to life? We want to go to a place with a zombie? That's totally insane. It's just like the rumors say, that forest is cursed. There's no way I could. Just standing there, the voices of suicide victims surrounded me. Shut the hell up, hag. No more words out of those lip flaps. Really, Shu? Really? But now it's not only the forest that's, cur that's cursed. I failed to kill myself and now I'm at this mansion. I'm cursed too. And so are all of you. Her mutters have a dark edge. If Shimio is somehow connected to Honeybee family, then the key to destroying his grudge is going to be there. Hmm. Oh right, what are you gonna do, old lady? You still wanna die? I'm considering it. But I'll help you guys while I settle on my decision. I'll pass on monster fighting. Wow, you'll help? I'm shocked. If you leave your mark alone, you won't need to hike back out there. Well, I hate owing strangers. Especially pushy guys like you. She seems grateful that we saved her. There's no reason to refuse her help. We need as much as we can get. The night is drawing to a close. The key to escaping the mark does seem to lie within the forest. Lady Christie has said Shimio was often seen near the bee farm. It may hold a connection to him. Good luck. New info was added to the spirit file. Temporary retreat. Okay. Five bullets, broken crowbar sprayer. Alright. Oh, here we go. Christy Amora. Christy Amora, female. Former news anchor. A famous former news anchor who was forced to resign because of a scandalous affair. She came to the forest to commit suicide. She has strong spiritual powers and often hears mysterious voices or sees ghost like figures. Well, damn. Alright. And then. Well, hang on. Bag. No, this one. Shimio. Okay. Uh, look elsewhere. What irony. Short Street back to... Okay. She most likely got a mark from Shimio. While we're discussing it, flashlight goes out. Not malfunctioning. Have to get out of here. Short Street back to the Forest Center. It's the only way. Alright, here we go. Here we go. Hmm. <clears throat> Somehow we get the car started and we speed out of the forest. Before we make it out, we spot two men, one of them familiar. It was Kimura. His neck twisted awkwardly. He seemed dead. The man beside him was smiling. Was that Shimi-O? The disembodied voice says, control those that are different and exercise them. Easy for them to say, how do I even do that? We learn another truth on our drive back to the mansion. Mashida who escaped the mark once already, now has it again. It appeared when he saw what we think is Shimi-O. It's true, then, that spirits are the ones causing, are the ones cursing people with the mark. But it's beyond me why Mashida would risk his life to learn more about the mark. He must have some kind of reason. Back at the mansion, Christy tells us of an incident in the forest she reported on back when she was an anchor. Five years ago, a group of people calling themselves the Honeybee family 
lived cut off from society deep in the forest, that is, until one day when they mysteriously committed mass suicide. News reports said they'd become disillusioned with society and followed their leader's orders to die, but the police investigation was inconclusive. The problem lies with the appearance of the leader who was said to have died with them. Christie says pictures show him to be a giant obese man. The mass suicide caused the forest to become quickly deserted. This honeybee family group concerns me. There were traces of their presence everywhere in the forest. If we want to survive any unexpected dangers or chance encounters with Shimio, we need to be careful to not overlook a single detail in this investigation. All right. Uh, Tall. If Shimio is somehow connected to this honeybee family group, you may find the key to ending the grudge at their bee farm. Do take care. By the way, Mary, there's one thing I'd like to confirm. Oh, it's Mashita. Mashita suddenly speaks up. When I stayed here earlier, you told me the truth you're seeking can be found here. I really doubt this, but did you know the Honeybee family had something to do with these marks? His voice shakes slightly with anger, but it doesn't faze Mary a bit. I do not have such power. I simply sense that your fate was entwined with Lord Yashiki's. I do not know what truth you are seeking, Lord Mashida. But if you remain near Lord Yashiki, I predict that you will find it. Tch, more occult bull. Mashida clicks his tongue, but he isn't scowling anymore, so his curiosity must be satisfied. What do they have to do with anything? I just owe them. That's all. Mishida falls silent, saying nothing more. I guess he doesn't want to tell me. Alright. Um, okay, we're gonna make a save. Okay. Alright. Um. I think I'll pick a partner next time? I think we're... Yeah, we're basically hitting the three-hour mark now. Oh, boy. All right. God damn. Let me just stretch a little bit here. Mm. 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 This is not too bad a spot to stop for now. Uh, stream, gonna say the stream is not ending right away, but... What you're going to hear, um, I record these for YouTube as well, so you're going to hear a bit of an outro for YouTube specifically. Don't worry about it, stream. We're not ending too... We're not ending right away, so just bear with me a sec. <clears throat> so, if you are watching this later on YouTube and you've been enjoying the series, you've been enjoying the videos, please, please, please leave a like. Comment, subscribe if you want to see more, and share it with anyone else you think might enjoy it. If you want to suggest a game, leave it in the comments below. You can check out links in the description there for uh, my throne. If you want to suggest like a physical copy, uh, a game that needs a physical copy, like PS2, PS3, something like that, just make sure the link's Canadian so it works properly. Uh, also, check out links in the description for Deathmark on Steam, although this is the Switch version that I am playing, so please keep that in mind. God damn. All right. So this son of a bitch, this guy, Shimio, oh my god. I was not expecting this, of all things. Ah. Making beehives out of people, possibly. That sounds like fun, fun times. And we're going to get to learn more of it next time. Oh my god. Uh. Yeah, no, this game has been amazing and massively effed up. But yeah, I guess we'll learn about that next time. Until then, this is DZ, your overlord, Desiran. You all have a great day, and I'll see ya. <laughs>